Hi, my name is Victoria Elliott, and I'm going to be your artist today. We're starting our new YouTube for Wine and Canvas. We are going to be doing some cookies classes also for some children. Make sure you subscribe and um, share our channel. We are going to be doing um, some supplies that we will be using. We will be using four brushes. These is our, this is our number one, this is our number two, and number three, and number four. One being our smallest, and four being our largest. We will be using some paints that we're going to be using, our acrylic. They are a water-based paint. Uh, today I'll be using blue, white, orange, black, some brown, and a little bit of yellow. If you happen to get it on your clothes, make sure you go ahead and just wash it off within 48 hours and it should come off. Or if you go ahead and dip your brush into whatever you're drinking and take a sip, it's okay. It is non-toxic and it won't hurt you at all. It might sting your teeth a little bit, but it is fine. We are going to start this painting. It's gonna be a little seabird painting. It's a fun little painting. Um, this is a time where everybody, since we're stuck at home, to go ahead and uh, make your personality come out, let your creativity come out, and don't be so afraid. Uh, you're, there's nobody watching, it's just you in your own home. So we'll go ahead and get started. I will be using water to mix my colors since this is a water-based paint. I'm going to start with a little bit of white. If you want to, you can go ahead and even put the rest of your brushes in your water. And I'm just mixing a little bit of white. I'm going to take a tad of blue in here. And I want the consistency of my paint to be almost like a yogurt or a very thin ice cream, cream that's, that's melted, melted maybe. And I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and start doing this almost a crisscross method to layer it into my canvas. Also, if you like your painting to possibly not be hung in a frame and you're going to just hang it on your wall, if you want to do the sides of your painting at this time, <clears throat> this would be the time to do that too. And after I do this little crisscross method, I'm layering it inside the fabric of the canvas, actually. Once I do this, I can go ahead and blend it back through a little bit. Right now, what we're doing is we're doing all the colors of the ocean in the background of this little seabird that we've got going. I'm not too interested right now in some of the waves. I can layer that in in just a little bit. Right now, I'm just doing my background and bringing it in. This is a very forgiving painting. You're not having to worry too much about some of your brush strokes. I know that everybody's been stuck at home and our creativity level has not been able to really be out there and do the normal things that we do. Hopefully, we've got flowers and gardens that's going to be coming in. I encourage everybody to go out and take some paper or if you've got extra canvas and go ahead and be creative a little bit. Take some of this stress off of everybody. And this is a good way to do it. It's everybody's own personal expression. Don't forget that. So if you want your bird to be a different color than mine, <clears throat> it's always just your own expression, your own personal style it would be pretty sad if everybody 
was Picasso or everybody was Van Gogh and nobody had their own unique style. We're not using a lot of paint. We're kind of layering it as we go a little bit. And in some areas, if I get it a little bit darker, I can bring in some of these areas a little bit more. Looks like you're darkening some areas where other areas are keeping lighter. Some of the areas I am keeping lighter and some I'm going ahead and darkening in up so that it almost appears like there's water coming in on the beach. So you're wanting to layer it just a little bit so you get that rippling effect of the water rushing in on the beach, up on the shore, where our little bird is, where our little seabird is. <coughs> That's why this is kind of a very forgiving painting because a lot of times we're trying to get rid of these streaks and in this painting we actually want those streaks. We want it to look like water that's coming in on the shore. I'm using my brush as a tool and I'm only going to go up to about an actual brush level. From here down I'm going to start bringing in my sand. So this from here on I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get that more of a white so that it would be like if there was foam coming in from my waves. So I'm leaving that kind of a lighter area through there. This is about the same measurement of my brush. I'm using it as a tool from my easel to about the top of my brush. And from here on, I'm going to go ahead and start bringing in. I'm not really even uh, cleansing my brush a little bit. But I'm going to mix a little bit of orange in here with my white. And I'm going to go ahead and start bringing in some of this down. Now if it's a little bit too bright for me, I can tone that down a little bit with a little bit more white. Same thing, I'm kind of crisscrossing that in, making sure it's really into the weave of my canvas. And as this dries a little bit, the color will change a little bit. And this is just my sand that the water is kind of rushing up on. In some areas, if I get this blue and I bring it in a little bit, that's okay. Because that's more of the water that's still rushing in on the shore. And if I want to bring a little bit more of the sand in color, I can do that. Or lighten it up if I want. Again, I'm doing my sides. And that's entirely up to you if you do your sides of your painting. A lot of times if I have too much paint or too much water, I can dab that, not like that, but <laughs> hopefully you didn't like uh, splatter it all over the walls, but it does happen sometimes. At times if I get a little bit too much on my brush, I can go ahead and dab it on my paper towel just to take a little bit off. You don't want to have too much um, water or pigment on your brush. You don't want it to run or leave any running marks all over your canvas. You want that to be pretty smooth when you do do it. So if you need to dab it on your paper towel to get some rid of some of the over maybe pigment or water you have on your brush, you can always just kind of dab it on your paper towel. And after you get your pretty much your background of where you're going to have everything, there's a couple maybe places 
up here I want to catch up with. This is your water again. So if you've ever looked at the ocean, there's a lot of colors that's going through that water. There might even be some seaweed turning up. So you're going to see a lot of different colors. I'm going to go ahead and switch our brush now to my number three. This is my number three. And I love my number three brush. This is kind of my go-to brush. I can use it very um, for a lot of different things. I can even use it for very thin lines. I can use it for very thick lines with a full stroke. So if this is kind of my go-to brush. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of black to this number three on some blue a little bit more. I'm going to darken up some of my areas here. And in some of these areas, it's just going to be a line. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of bring in a line. And maybe it's just very simple. It doesn't even have to be a full line. If I want to go ahead and maybe water some of my texture down here a little bit, I can kind of thin it out a little. I'm right now, I'm holding my brush, so I'm using my actually, the actual point of my brush right here. I can get a pretty thin line with this, and I'll kind of show you on my palette. If I go like this, you see I can get a pretty thin line. If I go like this, I can get a really thick line. So right now, just to get some of these lines here in my ripples of my water, I'm just kind of holding it where I can get the use of that thin line. And then again, if I wanted to get a, th a thicker, fatter line, all I have to do is just press and I can get a little bit thicker. Now, if this pixelates out on me a little bit like this, I can go back in and fix that so it doesn't um, have those little dots. And as it goes towards the shore a little bit, where I know I'm going to have a little bit more maybe white on foam on my waves, I can kind of make these lines just a little bit thinner. If you're having trouble getting some of these, your lines, your brush, as thin as you want it, you can always take your brush and squeeze it together and get a little bit thinner of an edge. If you're Maybe your brush is worn down a little bit, or you got too much paint, you want a little bit less on there. You can always thin it down a little bit just by squeezing it together a little bit. Again, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of black to this, kind of gray it down a little bit in some areas. I've hardly used very much black at all because I'm just wanting this to be grayed down. I don't want to lose the idea that it is a blue. It's almost at this point becomes a still blue where you've still got that little bit of blue tint, but now you're getting some gray in there. Again, if I've over, if it starts to pixel out on me a little bit, I can always like just smear that down a little bit. Take that away.
we're bringing this down a little bit into our sand, into our water. Here, where we've got a little bit of a reflection going on, where the water's come up a little bit. And what I've done here to get this kind of very thin is I've just went ahead and taken a little bit of pigment on my brush, and this is very, very thin. So I'm just kind of brushing it through here just to give me a little bit of a shadow. This doesn't have to be a lot on your brush. You're just wanting a little bit of shadow there on your beach where the water has come up. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit darker here. I know my bird is gonna be about centered here, so this is just, whoop, that's a little bit too dark. We're gonna tone that down a little. And if you get too much, there's uh, really no mistakes. We can tone it down, you can fix it. With this being the shadow, it's gonna be pretty easy to fix because we're just adding a little bit darker colors, a little bit darker pigment. We can add a little bit more even here. And as I go, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to blend this in. And if you get a little bit too much white, don't worry about that either because don't forget that water is coming in there. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more white throughout my painting. A little bit more in my wave areas. And I'm just really just layering it in. This is your ocean, you can kind of put it wherever you want. This is just adding a little bit of that little sea foam, that texture in between my waves. And as you see, some, in some of these areas, I really use my brush. I can um, flatten it down, get a little bit more flatter of a line. If I do want to go ahead and get it thinner, again, I can just press it together and get that really thin line. I'm going to bring in some of this white into this. Some of these areas, I, I like the way the line kind of actually looks like the water is rushing up. Some areas I don't even try to take that away. Once that dries, it kind of flattens out a little bit. I want to go ahead and add a little bit more shading. I'm going to add a little bit more. You want to bring any more of the blue back a little bit into where this bird is going to be. Yeah, just a little bit more. It's usually a little bit darker when you watch a wave come in where the water has hit it. It turns a little bit darker before it dries back out again. 
I'm going to let that dry for a second and then I'm going to go ahead and bring in our um, little seabird here. Welcome back from our break. We're going to go ahead and continue with a little bit of the shadowing in our water and then we'll go into our bird and bring him in on the shoreline right above our sand line. Before we go into the bird, I'm going to go ahead and darken some of my waves a little bit more. I wanted to make sure they were really good and dry before I did hit them again. And I'm just using a little bit of blue, but I am going to go back in and get some of that black. I want it to be a little bit of a gray, almost a battleship kind of gray color. And in some of these areas, I might want it to be just a little bit darker. If I get it a little bit too dark, I can always go back in, get some more color, and just bring it down a little bit. Again, right now I'm just kind of shadowing in some of these little ripples that's coming in. I'm just darkening them up just a little bit. And if there's some areas up above you still want it to bring in a little bit more shadowing, you can always do that. Right now I'm just darkening in just a little bit in the background. We're kind of working our way from the background of this to the foreground of where this bird is going to be. In some areas, I'm just using my number three and I'm using just the tip of it, bringing in some of these little small lines. I am going to go ahead and start bringing in the bird. I want us to go ahead and rinse your brush out really well. I'm going to start again with the number three. We're going to get a little bit of white on our brush. And this Paint really, you can thin it down quite easily with water. So if it's too thick, you can always put a little bit of water in there and thin it down. Now right up here, and it's almost half of our brush is what, it, what it's going to end up being. For the, for how far you're going to come into from your side is almost a whole brush. And this is where my bird is going to be. And this, all that we're going to do from right here is we're just going to make a circle. And it's quite easy. Just go ahead and use this brush to go ahead and use it as a circle. And that's all I'm doing. I'm just like actually using it as a circle. Now that's my bird's body. That's just going to be his belly. And I'll let that dry a little bit. Because I do want that really good and, and dry. And up above, I'm going to go ahead and, and put his little head I'm going to bring another circle and I'm going to put it right here, not as big. It's almost like we're building a snowman. Kind of looks that way right now. Again, we're going to let that dry a little bit. And now that's the body of our bird. And while that's drying, I'd like to pick up our number one. 
This is our number one. And we're going to go ahead and kind of put his little legs in there too. And I'm going to use orange. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown. Just darken it up a little bit. And all I'm going to do is put two little legs down here. And they're only about the size of my actual cullet, the brass part that's on my brush without the blue. We don't need the blue right now though. So his little legs are going to be about from here to here. We're only going to be about an inch. So all we're going to do is just put us two little legs in here right now. And they don't even have to be exact right now. This is just his little legs that's going to be into the water. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of orange or a little bit of brown here and make this look like this is where his little legs are going into the water right now. Um, orange and brown is what I used. And here I just picked up a little bit of the brown. And I'm just kind of bringing that in a little bit. Now if I want it to his little legs to be a little bit brighter, I can go ahead and add a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and start bringing in some of his feathers on this side. Let it get good and dry too. And this is just almost like you're going to go down and out. And it's fairly easy. You're just going to go off the shoulder of that bird a little bit and down. So now he has a little bit of a wing. And we'll darken that up here in a minute. We're just putting it in right now. And as I'm doing it, I'm kind of whitening my bird. Making him a little bit brighter. Now we're going to go ahead and start defining him a little bit more. I'm going to go back into my gray here and white. I'm just kind of a little bit of black, a little bit of white. It's more of a gray color. And I'm going to go ahead and bring his body down a little bit. Kind of just outlining a little bit around his shoulders, around his arms, his arms, his little wings. It doesn't have to be a lot because you can always go back in if you want and use more. Now he does have two wings, so I am going to do another outline of another wing. And his other wing is more of a dark. It's just kind of a, a shadow of what's there. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this one in. And his other one will just be the tip of it. And it's just going to stick out just a little bit on the other side. And it is going to be a little darker. If your brush gets too dry on you, go ahead and pick up a little bit more water on there. Again, if you need this... You can do the same thing with your number one as you can with your number three. If you need that to be a thinner point, you can always thin that brush down just by doing it with your fingers, just pushing it together a little bit. I 
again right now all I'm doing is a shadowing a little bit putting a little bit of shadowing underneath his belly there I can also bring a little bit more now into his wing Going to pick up a little bit more white. I don't want to be able to see my waves in back of him a little bit, so I do want that to be pretty white. I'm going to make his belly a little bigger. Since we're here, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of his little eyes in. His eyes are almost on a slant. So you've got one that's kind of looking at you this way, and you've got the other one that's kind of right here, but it's kind of on a slant. So those are his two little eyes. Go let that dry for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and pick up his beak a little bit. With that, I'm just using some orange. Kind of twirl my brush a little bit to make sure I get it on there really good. Now I'm going to use this technique of kind of pinching it together again a little bit because I want his little beak to come out about right here. And this is still kind of Got a lot of pigment on it, so I'll, I'll probably have to go over that again. Again, I'm going to pick up a little bit more pigment, a little bit more orange. I can even darken this up a little bit with a little bit of brown. Like we did his legs. Again, it's almost like a V is all I'm doing. shadow that down even a little bit more with just a little bit of brown on the bottom. Again, I'm going to press it a little bit. Make sure I get a good line there. And I'm going to go ahead and put his little eye in too. I'm using a little bit of black for that. And this is just a tiny little touch. So I almost want to twirl my brush to make sure I've got a nice little point there on the end so I can get that little end on his eye. I'm going to twirl it a little bit. Make sure I can get in there with a good point. Same with on this side a little bit and also on this side. Still shadowing a little bit in some of these areas. Just bringing in the bird just a little bit more. And only doing that with just basically shadowing in some areas now. If 
If, it, if you feel it's too dark, you can always go back in, lighten it up. This is just some shadowing. ahead and try to hit his little beacon a little bit more now. Kind of playing with his legs a little bit more. I'd like to bring them a little bit more into his body. Now that we kind of know how far he's going to go up. And while some of this is drying, I'm going to go ahead and start bringing a little bit of the shadow into his his body into the sand. By doing that, I'm going to pick up a little brown. I'm going to pick up a little bit of orange into that. Because again, I'm just going into the sand, so I'm just bringing in his reflection. By doing that, I'm just going to kind of bring in almost like, um, looks like maybe a triangle or from his legs, just the reflection of that body coming down. I can even go in with a little bit of more of the dark, the black, this gray, this battleship kind of a gray color, just to bring it in a little bit more. Kind of shadowing my little bird's head a little bit. I want his um, beak to be a little bit more pronounced, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it out a little bit more in the front. And I do want to make the eyes just a little bit They're kind of at a slant, like I said. They're not exactly. I am going to shadow his head just a little bit more. And if we go out, we can always go back in, pick up a little bit more in our ocean back here if we want more shadowing. And this is just like more waves are coming in.
putting a little bit more highlights on my head and my bird a little bit. And a little bit more shadowing and by doing that I'm just picking up a little bit of the gray and the blue if I want it a little bit darker I can go back in and I'm just doing this with lines just bringing it in kind of with just lines on my sand again we want it to kind of look like water like that's coming up on the water so we're going to put a little bit of water lines through there and all I'm doing here is just kind of some squiggly lines. The same around his feet a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and use my number three for a little bit wider color that I'm going to use for some of his body for his shadowing on the sand. Kind of rinsed it out pretty good. And all I'm going to be using is some of this grayish color that we've got. A little bit of black too. A little bit of brown. just going to be a little bit more shading and this is a little bit thicker lines that I can get and I'm going to go ahead and add some of this so it's like looks like it's coming in from a wave and he just kind of happens to be in the middle of it This is, I've thinned this out pretty good on my brush. I didn't really rinse the whole color out, just kind of rinsed it in a little bit. And I'm just going to go ahead and bring some of this in, just almost like a glaze. You can see I'm just kind of barely touching this in, but it's really, it's giving me a texture of water that this water is kind of coming at. It's almost like a translucent then appearance. And this is kind of my reflection of my bird then. It's in my water. If you want to add any more reflections on your bird or any more, if you think he needs any more outlining, you can kind of do that too if you need to or since you're up there. I can also add any more shading right now in my water with this translucent again. Just using this kind of a translucent, very, very thin. But by doing it, I can add just some really thin lines. And just some shadowing in my water.
And when we're done, make sure you sign your painting. You never know when these are going to be worth something. Maybe even just to a family member. Or then again, since we've got this pandemic, you never know what these are going to end up being. Again, I'm just kind of adding a little bit more lines to where the my water line is coming through and touching my beach. And this is just my interpretation. There's always your own interpretation. Don't always think that everybody's has to look the same. It doesn't. Everybody's is always a little bit different. And I'm going to thicken his leg up a little bit more. This one looks a little thin. He's been on a diet. Okay. And make sure you go ahead and sign your painting when you're done. And I'll just sign mine here on the right hand side. Thank you everyone for joining me today. This is my first attempt at YouTube here. So hopefully everyone was able to paint today. And if you did enjoy yourself, make sure you hit your share and our like button. And make sure that you continue to go ahead and try to be creative through this time when we're all shut in at home. Let your personal expressions, your personality and your creativity Try to link into that and come alive right now. Uh, we will be doing more videos through April. And make sure that um, you join us. I'd appreciate having you. Thank you.